It's not just Roger Federer and Serena Williams needing to shake off some rust before the first Grand Slam tournament of the new season. While Federer and Williams lost on Wednesday, Angelique Kerber and Dominika Sibylkova, the top two seeds, are out of the Brisbane International, one of those Australian Open warm-up events. Kerber's loss is perhaps the most interesting. She holds the world number one spot that Serena Williams would love to have back. And the German made 48 unforced errors as she slipped to a three-set defeat by Alina Svitolina. Sibylkova's tournament ended by France's Alice Cornet, 6-3-7-5. Let's get more on this with tennis legend Chris Evert, winner of the Australian Open in 1982 and 1984. Two of her 18 Grand Slam single titles. She still holds the record for the highest winning percentage in pro tennis history. And that just scratches the surface of your achievements in the game, Chris. We'll be here for the next 15, 20 minutes. So <laughs> I better get to my first question. Lovely to speak to you uh, live from Florida. And I presume when you see the shock Thank defeats you. we're hearing about from the other side of the world, you're not that surprised because it's, it's so early in the season. Yeah, it's not a shock unless it would happen in the Australian Open. You know, I think that's really, these tournaments are uh, tournaments to really prepare yourself. It is the first tournament of the year. So I think it shows that, you know, these players are probably playing their way uh, into the Australian Open. I think that's the big uh, target where they want to do well. Um, but I think it also shows that the competition is so close, and that's the beauty of, of especially women's tennis right now. Yeah, you're talking about the close competition. That Kerber-Williams rivalry is absolutely fascinating. How important is it to the women's game in general to see that? You know, rivalries make, us, make the sport. You know, I, I think that... Um, when I think back in my rivalry with Martina, you know, we we just we played over 80 times, and it became something that people wanted to turn on the TV and watch. They wanted to see the outcome. It was so close, and I think rivalries, especially if there's a contrast in styles like Kerber and Serena, a contrast in personalities, I think it makes it for you know really interesting TV and drama. So I'm I'm very, I'm really happy that finally somebody has stepped up to challenge Serena Williams, and it is Angelique Kerber. How interesting for you to talk about a difference in styles. You look at someone in the men's game like Nick Kyrgios, who's certainly got a, a different style to the rest. I mean, you were famous for being pretty sporting on the court. Um, how much do you think does keeping your cool help you get results at, at the top level of the game? Well, for me, because if you look at me, I'm not the athlete that, you know, Martina was or Steffi was. I didn't have the strength that they had. I didn't move as quickly as they did. You know, I, I not to undermine my athletic ability, but I wasn't a, you know, I, I wasn't up at their level. So I feel like I made up for it in the mental department. You know, I stayed cool under pressure. I played every point like it was match point, um, and it worked for me. But not everybody can do that. Look at John McEnroe. He used to get upset all the time, but he'd get upset, and then he'd get back to the next point, and it would be forgotten. So, you know, everybody sort of has to go along their own personality. Can you blame the pressure on young players today? Have they got it harder? Would you like to be starting out in the game today? I think the game is, you know, I think right now the game is bigger business. There's more money. There's more uh, media. There's social media, which, you know, you can't do anything in private anymore. Everybody knows everything about your life. Uh, I think that adds more pressure. You know, the players travel with uh, entourages of, you know, trainers and coaches and agents. And we, we didn't have that in our day. You know, it was, there was less pressure for sure. So in answer to your question, yeah, I think there is more, more pressure. Um, sounds like you were from the golden heyday, Chris, that, uh, that we all remember fondly. Um, yes. Tell us what you're up to today yes. in, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I know that America's desperate yep. for the next big tennis star to come through. Uh, you know, I'm in Orlando at the USDA National Campus, and um, it's a phenomenal facility. It, it's 100 courts, 64 acres. It really, you know, will help players at every level from professional players who come here and want to train hard to young kids who are around and around the country. Um, it's going to help players with disabilities. It's going to help recreational players, college players, um, under-resourced kids the USDA is bringing in to help. And so it's, it's really helping and reaching out to players at every level. And I think it's going to be the tennis mecca of the United States right now.
Sounds like a fantastic facility and a fantastic fun speaking to such a legend of tennis. Chris Everett, really appreciate your time here on CNN. Many Thank thanks. You.